tonight. Trump didn't come out of nowhere now. For years, Republican politicians and far-right media outlets had just been pumping out all kinds of toxic, crazy stuff. President Obama continues to run the country by pounding his opposition. Don't you have better things to do, Mr. President? We'll have a special report. It's a contract between Donald J. Trump and the American voter. And it begins with bringing honesty, accountability, and change to Washington, D.C. Donald Trump putting forth his contract with the voters, but the media essentially ignores it. Talking points will spell it out. Who are the vice presidential candidates? Sarah Palin. <laughs> the other guy, the Democrat, Tim... Horton. <laughs> Coffee. Also ahead, Waters asking college students about the upcoming vote. I hope Mickey Mouse or Oprah win. Caution. You are about to enter the no-spin zone. Factor begins right now. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Donald Trump wants you to listen to him. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points Memo. On Saturday at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Mr. Trump delivered a speech that promised a contract between him and the American voter. So, let's take a look at it. Republican says he will push for term limits on all congressional members. He will freeze hiring at the federal level. He will crack down on lobbying. And he will renegotiate trade deals that he feels are harming in America. So far, nothing too dramatic. But then Mr. Trump of Siani says he will stop funding sanctuary cities, says he will remove two million undocumented immigrants, people he feels are dangerous, and cancel visas from countries that won't take them back. He repeated that he will suspend immigration from terror-prone regions like the Middle East. In addition, Trump promises middle-class families with two children a 35% tax cut. Wow. He says he will spend $1 trillion on infrastructure over the next 10 years. He promises to repeal and replace Obamacare. He says he will build that border wall. Also, Trump says he will support case law, mandatory five-year prison sentences for those who illegally re-enter the USA with a felony conviction on their sheet. Now, most of these promises appeal to Republicans and are abhorrent to Democrats. So Trump is really trying to solidify his base here which has slipped over the past few weeks, while also trying to attract independent voters who are fed up with lax policies for immigration and national security. The question then becomes, did anyone actually hear Trump's Gettysburg speech? Again, it was given on a Saturday when most Americans are not watching TV, and the anti-Trump news media gave it scant attention. What the media did trumpet, pardon the pun, was Trump's threat to sue some of the women who are accusing him of improper conduct. That was everywhere. And Talking Points believes that the election 2016 has really not served the voters well. That's a good example. There has been far too much hysteria, hatred, stupid partisan rumblings. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump have opposite views of how this country should be run. That's the important thing. And anybody voting on November 8th should know exactly what those views are. Trump's contract should have been widely reported in a fair universe. But, of course, we are not in a fair universe. And that's the memo. Now to the top story. The race is still close. According to a new CNN poll released just hours ago, survey of 779 likely voters says Clinton's support at 49%, Trump at 44 3% margin of error. An ABC News poll over the weekend had Clinton ahead by a whopping 12 points, but in that poll, just 27% of those sampled are registered Republicans. So... Some are discounting the survey. Join us now from Washington, Bob Kisak, editor of The Hill, and Kelly Riddell, deputy editorial editor at The Washington Times. So did the policy speech come too late for Donald Trump, Ms. Riddell? No. He needs to hit home policy at every point that he has in this election. He is only, it was only 14 more days, only two more weeks to go, and he needs to stop giving the media excuses to cover his antics and his personality and hone it in on policy. A Rasmussen poll out this week shows that only 29% of likely U.S. voters believe this country is on the right track. That is his motto. He needs to emphasize change, yeah, but what I don't and understand change in every is, direction. Why do you do this speech on a Saturday when people are out? Uh, beautiful autumn we're having in America, college football over the place. 
He gives this in a, on a Saturday, and then he says, Mr. Cusack, mm -hmm. uh, that he's going to you know, sue the women who are uh, portraying him in a negative light. And I'm going, you know, or your people must know, that that's going to be the headline, not your policy. Am I wrong? Yeah. No, I don't think you're wrong. He's got to focus on policy. He's got to focus on Hillary Clinton. When he does that, he's not focusing on Paul Ryan or Miss Universe or any of his accusers. He actually does quite well. And he's got to win every day from this point to the election and probably need some type of October surprise that's going to help him and hurt Hillary Clinton. But he's got to show that political discipline. If I were doing that speech, I probably would have scheduled it for a, a Monday or Tuesday yeah. at the beginning of the week. Um, but he's, time is running short, as you know that. Um, were you surprised at the CNN poll of Mr. Riddell? Uh, and, you know, that's not a blowout by any no. means. No, I'm, I was not surprised at all. Listen, you know, Hillary Clinton, if you look at her polls in the battleground states, she does not poll above 50%. For all intents and pur purposes, she is the incumbent in this election. Usually, conventional political thought is if an incumbent is not polling above 50%, late-breaking deciding deciders, undecideds, will break towards the challenger, and that will be Donald Trump. He needs to stay on a change message. He, got, he has to stick to the policy. Just today, uh, the administration, the White House, announced that Obamacare premiums are going to go up 25%, and that's just on their benchmark plan. Tomorrow, if he's smart, he will drive that message yeah home. I mean that came out today and uh, thank you for uh, mentioning it um, and the administration didn't fight it said look if you're in the Obamacare um, spectrum and you're paying not being subsidized <laughs> you know, you're gonna be paying 25 percent more that's not good news for the folks carrying the ball here now Mr. Kizak were you surprised that um, you have a, a situation that is so fluid. It would seem, I mean, Trump's almost like Dracula, all right? <laughs> you, you, you just when you thought you had the stake, yeah. and the, ah, here we go, and there, he's <laughs> flying away. Yeah. Um, and are you surprised that Hillary Clinton can't seem to put him away? Uh, yes and no. I mean, he's had a, a rough month, no doubt about it. But at the same time, her likability, I mean, I know a lot of people who don't know who to vote, that he can sway them down the stretch here. And if he focuses uh, on the emails, focuses on policies, focuses on Obamacare, uh, that maybe he can turn this thing around. But he's not down, as, as that poll so shows. So you say he's it's not because she's unpopular with the folks, that's why she hasn't put him away? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And I think, remember, this is the year of the outsider. People want change. They want uh, and it, Trump but they want it in them. an orderly manner, and they don't Correct. want that's what's held uh, Mr. Trump back. He's just too chaotic. Uh, Ms. Riddell, are you surprised, do you believe, I should say, do you believe reports out of Washington where you live that Hillary Clinton thinks she's got it in a bag and now is just going to go underground and work for the Senate and the House and all that? Do you believe those reports? Yeah, I do believe those reports. I know that there's a lot of Republican establishment members in this town right now that are already planning on Donald Trump's loss and making making their next moves uh, in 2020 and 2018 uh, Senate races and House races. So this is all, you know, for the establishment folks. I they, think they this is a done race. Over. They believe it's over. Mm -hmm. It's up to the American public to prove them wrong. Mr. Cusack, do you believe Hillary Clinton thinks she's got it? Yeah, I do. I think. I mean, she was overconfident in 2008. Uh, she thought she was going to be the nominee and then the next president. Uh, and I do believe that they think that these polls that are close are the outliers. And, and certainly they're getting ready for the transition of power. All right. We appreciate you guys. Good debate. Thank you. Next on the rundown, Washington Post comment says, I, your humble correspondent, have been too soft on Donald Trump. She will be here, and that should be very interesting. And later, Water is talking to college students about voting for president. Up ahead. Insult women. It's all talk. Well, here we go again. It's really bad judgment. Issues, not insults. She should be ashamed of herself. Fox News Channel has election. For Rubin, a blogger for the Washington Post, writes a column and has been very critical of the factor's coverage of Donald Trump. On September 26, Ms. Rubin wrote, quote, It's not even surprising that talk radio host Fox News fake news people, Bill O'Reilly, right-wing blogs, and anti-immigrant extremists buy into Trump's candidacy. On September 21st, she said this, quote, Trump should do interviews with real news people, not Sean Hannity and Bill O'Reilly in preparation for the debates. He's otherwise in for a rude awakening when someone asks him a real question, unquote. Pretty harsh. 
Joining us now from Washington is Jennifer Rubin. So thanks for coming on, but sure. you know you're entirely wrong about this. Your own newspaper posted a headline that said, the O'Reilly Trump interviews are the best Trump interviews. <laughs> Did you miss that? Did you miss it? No. I. My criticism is um, really that um, you actually are in the spin zone. Um, it's presented as a news program or a pseudo news program, and instead it's a lot of parroting what Trump is saying to you. Give me uh, um, one example of how I've parroted Donald Trump. Sure. You've attacked the moderators in the other debates, calling uh, them the fixes in. Yeah, Martha Raddatz and Anderson Cooper. You've also, well, for wait, example, wait, wait. How, taken how up... How did I attack Mr. Cooper in this round? You said the fix was in. Um, I have a whole list, actually, the here. Fix, um, perhaps I can go through them all. The fix um, was in how? The fix was in that they were going to be hostile to Mr. Trump. I said they uh, were. I said they were Democrats, all right? Yes, which also isn't not? true. Actually, the only Democrat was Chris Wallace. No. Ms. Raddatz and Mr. Cooper are Democrats. You did not know that? Right. No. The, the one who is the registered Democrat is Chris Wallace. So what are Ms. Raddatz and Mr. Cooper? They'll have to ask for themselves. I but did. see, I mean, see what you're doing, Bill, is you're taking up the argument of the candidate rather than acting as an independent person. Mm, that's not Once true. Again, if, if I see that two Democrats are sitting there, both who have been um, aggressive with Donald Trump, all right, and then you have a candidate, Hillary Clinton, that's three against one, all right? And to my, in my analysis, and I do what you do, I have a right to, th to say that may be not the fairest position. Right. It's a question of whether it's balanced. And unfortunately, over time, and like I said, I have a really long list of them, um, essentially you've kept up what the Trump campaign has been saying. You've made excuses for the locker up comment. You've pleaded with Ted Cruz I, that he's wait, really wait, wait, an honest when, man. When did, I, when did I make excuses for lock her up? What, what did I exactly oh, say? Oh, um, let's see. Um, that would have been on... Uh, let's see if I have the date exactly. It would have been on... Lock her up would have been on... In April and also in August. And in the, August, yeah. uh, in, rather in October, if you remember, Charles Krautheimer came on and had a very vigorous well, argument. Wait a minute, what did I say about in April and August? What exactly did I say? Right. Well, we can go through all of them. No, um, I want that one. Which one in particular? April or August. Okay. Um, let's see. In August, um, let's see. Um, we had comments that you were going to you would if somebody is being really dishonest referring to the press corps you would strip them of their credentials as well doesn't sound like an independent okay, that, thing. That, that doesn't have anything to do with lock them up. You are ill prepared for this interview, Miss Rubin. No, I'm you, not. I have a whole list here. Miss Rubin, um, I have just given you a minute where you've hemmed and hawed. You said yes, I said okay. I you said I justified a comment, lock her up. You can't point to it, and then you pivot to something else. Yes, you're you are ill prepared for this. And no, this is the it's point I want to make. Bell. This is the it's point I want to make. Your column and blog are fraud. <laughs> we have been tough on Trump here, and I'm gonna roll some tape. No, it's not. Oh, oh yeah? you play this little montage Listen to this. for all your guests. Listen it, it shows the this. three things that Roll you said mean about him. Are you worried that sometimes when you say these things that peaceful Muslims will be the victim of backlash? Yeah. You're behind with women. Are you going to target... I'm not sure I believe it. Well, I, you know, whether you believe it I'm or not, not sure that's what the polling says. Yes. So you think your birther position has hurt you among African Americans? And are you getting mad at guys like me when I ask you the negative questions? Well, I, no, I think you've become very negative. I do think... Yeah, me? Yeah. Why, I think Why would become, I do that? I don't know. Who knows? I, you'll have to ask your psychiatrist. All right. So, Bertha... Uh, covered there. Right. Um, October October 10th, you defend uh, Trump's promise to put Hillary in jail. October... Well, well um, tell me how I did that, madam. You just can't throw out, what did I say? You said that it was a perfectly defensible position. You can go to your own No, class. I didn't. That's not true. I didn't yes, say it was a perfectly did. defensible... You, read, I didn't. Read, read, with read my comments. Do you have my comments there? Read them. I, I don't have them word for word, You're but I have the date. And I'll, you know what I'll do, Bill? I'll put them up at my website you, and people ahead, can judge and You know themselves. how many people are going to come to your website? Zero. Because you're not 
an honest analysis person. Well, you just you're don't not. like what I'm you're saying, not, Bill. I actually have all the incidents yeah, here. Yeah, I know. There was the time that Charles Krautheimer came on the show, and he had to really castigate you for saying um, you, you were using weaselly words, he said, to okay. defend Trump's violence. You know what the difference you have is gone between down the Krautheimer and channel. I? You've gone down we're and called for Judge people. Curiel to be uh, withdrawn from the case. That's racism. Yeah, I know. I'm a racist. You're right, Ms. Rubin. No, you, the you comment know, was champ. racist, and you indulged you're real, Trump. You're a real star, a real champ. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Directly ahead, once again, President Obama attacking conservatives. Is that doing the country any good? Then an outrageous story. Thousands of American soldiers may have to pay back some bonus money to the feds. Can you believe it? Not if we can help it. Those reports after these messages. This message is to my followers. Finish what I couldn't seek and find. He created a plague in four days. Look, look, look. It's a clue. Can you crack the code? Half the people on Earth will die. Seek. 2016 segment tonight, President Obama making the rounds, hammering Donald Trump and conservatives in general. Trump didn't come out of nowhere now. For years. Republican politicians and far-right media outlets have just been pumping out all kinds of toxic, crazy stuff. And according to them, I'm power enough to cause these hurricanes and I'm about to steal everybody's guns in the middle of the night. Now join us now from Boston, Mary M. Marsh here in New York City at Monica Crowley. So, I mean, I don't begrudge Barack Obama going out and trying to get Hillary Clinton elected because if Trump wins, he's going to dismantle Obamacare and everything else. Everything. Everything, no. okay? Right. So if I were the president, I'd be doing the same thing. And he's doing his uh, Kevin Hart routine out there, you know? <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, and, and I kind of, I, I think it's amusing. But I think that when you see things like that, that might mobilize independent voters to vote for Trump. Well, I think Trump's uh, supporters are, are already pretty energized. I don't think they need President Obama to mobilize No, it's the them. independent people he needs. But what Obama's comments do is remind voters, and in particular, as you point out, independents, moderates, and also disaffected Democrats, that President Obama, while he's still personally popular, has presided over extremely unpopular policies, from Obamacare to massive government spending and deficits well, how would that remind to deep him of cuts that, though, in the military he's zeroing to, to the retrenchment of U.S. power. Because, I'll tell you why, this election, based on every bit of polling we've gotten even over the last year, has shown 70% of the American people think that the country is on the wrong track. They want to change. This is a change election. So when President Obama goes out, his mere presence reminds them that, yeah, they kind of like him personally, but they're rejecting right. his policy because they want a wholesale change. The line that the conservative media, Marianne, um, has been responsible for Donald Trump's rise, and, you know, you just heard the interview with Ms. Rubin, and, you know, that guys like me are somehow carrying him like Queen Nefertiti in a little... <laughs> Uh, you know, there's four of us. That's a sign. Here, here we go. You know, I mean, it's so crazy absurd. Even if you favor Donald Trump, and we try to be fair here, okay, it's not about a big conspiracy. It's just that his belief system is more compatible with millions of Americans' belief system. It has nothing to do with Barack Obama, crazy. Uh, you know, right-wing guys living in the mountains. Come on, it's just ridiculous. Well, I, I, here's the point President Obama's making, and it's very smart, very strategic. He reminds all the voters that the environment was laid by Republicans, but it was Donald Trump who opened Pandora's box. And he gave permission to many people in this country to say out loud things that we normally only saw on flyers or in the far-right provinces of the Internet, um, derogatory comments based on religion, race, women, and well, other things. Wait a things. minute, Marianne. So, if you're going to do that, you have to do your other side too there have been so many insane <laughs> far left comments so much crazy stuff just look at the veritas video i mean you can't well, just cherry pick if you're the leader of the I, free i'm not world. cherry first of all i'm the veritas i'm not going to sit here and judge a video made by someone who's been convicted of a felony well, you twice. Don't, you okay, don't have I think to, that's unfair. Look, the words speak so for not, themselves. That's not, you know, we do that, know. Well, no. And they and the guy did resign from the pack. We do know that this happened. So if you don't like the video or the way it was put out, it's not that I don't like, like the that, video. I, I think we. Tr I'm a. Tr I Bill, happened. I think like you, I'm trying to. I'm only trafficking in facts here, and I'm trying to explain to you why Obama's saying this. Because then he goes on to say. If you reject Donald Trump yeah. and what he represents, then you need to reject every Republican running. And that's where, yes, it fires up the Republican base. But that's base, crazy. But you know, it a also, lot of Republicans but it, but point No, it, 
hold on, it appeals to Democrats and unenrolled women whom he is very popular with. He is persuading right, 95% unenrolled women of to Democrats vote for Democrats are going to vote for Clinton. her anyway. All right. No, you know, unenrolled women. You know why women. I, get, I get annoyed? Because I think he should be doing other stuff. Uh, you know, good, okay, you like Hillary Clinton, you know, fine, but, uh, you know, he's only got a few more weeks and he's a lame duck, um, and maybe some guys with duck suits will go out as the Veritas video, and we're going to discuss that with Charles Carhammer. But, um, you know, I, I just think he should be doing You mean you stuff. think that the President of the United States ought to have better things to do yeah, than yeah. slam to Donald Trump yeah. and pick the scab of Fox News yeah, you know, and, no, and talk yeah, radio? Pick the Cleveland Cub series, do anything. <laughs> well, Alright, let's give like, Marianne the, the last This word. is the sweet spot for Barack Obama right. that we I know. Oh, I know it's easy. Governing. I know he's going to go on a concert ticket after he's out of office, and I'll go to see him. I think he's funny. Last word, real quick, Marianne. Look, Barack Obama's most important job is to make sure he elects someone who's going to improve and continue upon his policies. That's Hillary Clinton, and he wants to elect yeah. uh, Democratic senators, Democratic congressmen, governors, and legislators too. And that's how everyone's going to get fired up to turn out. Right. That's a smart investment of his time. Fired up. Ladies, Fire thank up, you. Ready to go. Plenty more ahead. As the factor moves along this evening, Charles Krauthammer whether Republicans can hold the Senate and the House, blunting Hillary Clinton if she does win. Then Waters talking to college kids about the vote. Hillary's VP candidate is Tim. No idea. Rhymes with Bane. Tim Wayne. <laughs> we hope you stay tuned for those reports. Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Trace Gallagher, getting health care an average of 25%. However, that's before taxpayer-provided subsidies. The report also says about one in five consumers will only have plans from a single insurer to choose from. U.S.-backed Iraqi forces advancing into two villages near Mosul today. A Pentagon spokesman says the fighting is getting more intense as they push closer to the ISIS-held city. The offensive that began last week is expected to last for weeks, perhaps even months. Mosul, the largest city controlled by ISIS, is still home to more than one million civilians. I'm Trace Gallagher in Los Angeles, now back to The O'Reilly Factor. Impact segment tonight, more than 10,000 soldiers, many of whom served multiple combat tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, have been ordered to repay military bonuses they received. Outrageous, you bet. Especially because President Obama has issued 258 executive orders and could easily stop this madness by putting out another one. Joining us now from Washington, Leo Shane, Capitol Hill Bureau Chief for the Military Times newspaper. So explain what's going on so even I can understand this. All right, You, you, you sign up. Uh, to go fight for your country mm -hmm. and your promise some money. We'll start there, right? Sure, and the enlistment bonuses change from year to year. Now, these bonuses that we're talking about happened in 2005, 2006, uh, some as late as 2010, but this was a time when the Army was really trying to get folks to enlist. It was the height of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. So these folks thought that they were eligible for bonuses of $10,000, $15,000. They received that money, they spent that money, uh, and now 10 years later, the DOD, the California Guard, is coming back and saying, yeah, you weren't actually eligible for that. Uh, some mistakes were made, some fraud was made, by some other people, we're, we're going to need that money back now. Okay, let me stop you there. Well, you said um, they believed, they were offered the money. I mean, they, these people were offered the money from the Department of Defense mm -hmm. in California because they were California National Guardsmen. It's not like they came in and started to negotiate, like, if, if you give me this, I'll do that. It was, here's what we can give you, right? No, absolutely. And a lot of these folks, still, the DOD is saying they didn't do anything wrong. No, but they accepted what right. was offered them. So it's not their problem. And well, it's their problem, the though. It's not their fault, but it's their problem no, now it's because not. the DOD wants the money back. No, it's not. Who's the commander in chief of the U.S. Armed Forces, Mr. That, Shane? That, that would be President Obama. Thank you. And who can sign with this pen that I will go down there and give him an executive order for giving this debt? Well, most of the folks up on Capitol Hill have said it shouldn't even have to come to that. They no, think but the that's Pentagon the fastest it. way to bring relief, to, as you pointed out, to people now who are looking at a $15,000 payback and they don't have the money. That's cruel. No, absolutely. And these folks, are, it, some of them are getting hit with real financial problems now. Sure. I mean, as you can imagine, it's $15,000 isn't a small amount of money to uh Well, here's to what I want the Military Times to do. 
I want you to editorialize that the commander in chief should sign an executive order for giving this debt. So I've been talking to folks on Capitol Hill this week, and I don't deal with our editorial side, but I'll, I'll be happy to pass that yeah, message along to them. Just suggest it gently. I, I'll to mention that. that to them. But the folks on Capitol Hill think the Pentagon should be able to handle this within days on their own, without anyone else interfering, intervening. They, they're not sure why the Pentagon decided to go this route, especially for folks who really had no Look, fault involved here. The Secretary of Defense, Ash Carter, is running around all over the place. I'm not making excuses for him, but I'm telling you, that the President of the United States is where the buck stops, as Harry Truman said. And the President could send a message to all military people that we have your back. This is our mistake, a bureaucratic mistake made at the Department of Defense, and I, your Commander-in-Chief, are going to take this pen and in a stroke of it, put it to rest. Well, I know the Department of Defense is looking into this. I know folks on Capitol Hill are looking into this. I haven't heard that suggestion yet, but I'm sure it'll come up in the next few days I here. I hope it does. If there's not a quick solution. And if it doesn't, I'm going to be very upset. Mr. Shane, so <laughs> I'll be happy to I'll be happy to talk to them around. when I can, and uh, I will I'll be more than happy to suggest spread that. Spread that folks. around. I am going to be very upset. And you know, when I get upset. Of, things happen. <laughs> a lot of the veterans groups want action on this. I you want know, it done heard, by Friday. We've heard lots of folks, and I there may be by something by Friday. The DOD is saying that they're looking into this now. All they right. uh, they, they have, think there may be some solutions. They have till Friday. <laughs> Mr. Shane, thanks I'll, very much. I'll when give them right a call back. and let them know. Good. Charles Bradhammer has some thoughts on whether Republicans can hold the House and Senate. The waters with college kids talking about the election. Don't miss it. Moments away. News show for 16 years and counting. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Bill O'Reilly in the Unresolved Problem segment tonight. According to the polls, the so-called down-ticket racists, senators and congresspeople, are all over the place. While Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton slug it out, nobody really knows if the Republicans will hold Congress. Join us on Washington, Charles Krauthammer. What you feeling about that Senate and House business? Well, the House stays Republican although the margin will be narrowed and most of those who lose will likely be moderates which means that ryan may have a harder time controlling his caucus the senate you can't really tell but the republicans are just hanging on by their fingernails here remember they only have a four-seat advantage if hillary wins the presidency you, uh, you only need fifty because the vice president swings the balance the only seat that's really in danger that's now held by Democrats is the Nevada seat because of Harry Reid's retirement. Right. And right now it's essentially a dead heat. You've got, uh, I think it's a 2.3 point average, or the Democrat is ahead. Uh, so that can go either way, but likely held by the Democrats. That means four seats to go on the other side. And here you could say Illinois and Wisconsin, the Democrats pretty far out ahead. So that's two of the four. Then you've got Kelly Ayotte in New Hampshire. She's, she's sort of in a two-point two race. She's behind right now. Uh, and Missouri, Roy Blunt. He's yeah. basically neck and neck. So those are the four. There are a couple more out there. Uh, but then you've got the outliers, people worried about the... Dem Republicans worried about Rubio and uh, Burr in North Carolina. They've got more substantial leads. I think right now, if you had to bet the House, you'd say re Republicans lose five or four, and that would swing the Senate to the Democrats. Yeah. But that would be if the vote were tonight. Okay. Um, because you saw a tightening, uh, as we discussed earlier, in the CNN polls, a lot right. uh, tighter than the ABC poll. And, um, you know, at this point, I think you're correct. It, it could go either way in a lot of these races. Now, um, do you remember when Bush the Elder ran for president in 92, they had guys with chicken suits chasing him around, Chicken George? Do you remember any of that? I don't remember, but okay. I'll take your word for okay. it. Okay, because this came up in a Project Veritas undercover tape. And uh, it's an interesting uh, situation. So let's roll that, and we'll discuss it with Charles afterward. And the guy who had done this other Chicken George thing had this other idea, and in the end it was the candidate, Hillary Clinton, the future president of the United States. 
stage you wanted ducks on the ground. So if I got we can get ducks on the ground. Oh, and, uh, shit. So it's... Wow. Don't, don't repeat that thing. Okay. Uh, and the... Uh, uh, and it is a clever... It's a better idea. So the ducks on the ground were uh, Donald Duck, Donald's ducking, releasing his tax returns, that kind of thing. Never really materialized. Uh, this is uh, another uh, portion of that Veritas Undercover that um, before showed that there was some violence at Trump rallies inspired by this uh, Democratic crew. But it's the first time Hillary Clinton's name has been mentioned in association with so-called dirty tricks. How do you read it? Well, first of all, I have to commend Chicken George for his uh, conditioning. It's a quarter century later. He must be working out <laughs> to go into a duck costume in daytime, often in the heat. That's quite admirable. Look, compared to the other tape, the one where they're talking about inciting people to violence, yes. which is very that serious stuff. That is, this is almost comical. It is, it is, except for the Hillary Clinton. As you know, that's illegal. If Hillary Clinton would I, yes. get involved with a pack. That would be illegal, and that, that's why I even ran it. Uh, I understand. But first of all, let's, let's look at this sort of... First of all, it's not, I don't think it's going to have any effect on anybody. Second, because this is invoking her name. There, there's no documentary evidence that she actually was involved. Not yet. If there were, no, if there were an email, there's an open testimony, I don't know, perhaps. But the other thing is, look, there's sort of this understanding i think all of us accept that this the barrier between the packs and the campaign and the candidates which is supposed to be impermeable right is sort of a loose one we all know that after all the packs are manned by x by x Officials of one or other of the candidates who know how they yeah, uh, feel. Yeah, I, I know. But they I got a kick out of together. Uh, Hillary, so Hillary wanted ducks on the ground. Sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which, <laughs> you know, imagine if that's, you know, it that that's sucks. what history writes. She doesn't want boots on the ground, Charles. She wants ducks on the ground. And I, I think right. you could rally a nation around that. There you go. Water's on deck. He's talking to college students about the vote. Right back with it. In the Tonight Waters world, some experts believe younger Americans will not turn out in large numbers to vote on November 8th. That's hypothetical, of course, but we thought it might be interesting to send Waters out to talk with some college students. Have you been following the election closely? Oh, yeah. I guess. I don't feel very good. Who are the vice presidential candidates? I have no idea. But I haven't been, like, really focused on the vice presidents. What the hell is the world coming to? Who are the vice presidential candidates? Uh, Republican nominee Donald Trump and Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton. We'll start with the Republican. Sarah Palin? <laughs> no. Mike? Ah, uh, man. It's a lot of mics, I know. Mike. <laughs> Clinton. Mike Clinton. I'm sorry, I don't really know. Mike Pence. You serious? I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. The other guy, the Democrat, Tim Horton. <laughs> I want to get this down on a tape recorder because nobody is going to believe me. Uh, Kane and... Mike Pence and Kane. Mike Pence and Tim Kane. Tim Kaine and Mike Pence. Oh my God, you're off to a hot start. <laughs> when is the election? November, um, probably the 28th, probably. I don't want to hear this. Next month, November. Exactly. When is the election? November 4th. Election day. Let's count kind of that. Good answer. November 8th? November 8th. November 8th. Not a lot. What is an electoral vote? Isn't it like when somebody's like, it, it's too hard to vote? The people's vote. Truthfully, I don't fully understand that as much as I'd like to. Maybe you need a refresher course. Hey! It's when you win over a state because the majority of the electoral college votes in that state went to one candidate, so then you get a certain amount of numbers based on the population of the state. Is the uh, 270 you need to win. We're going to take all in every state except Maine and Nebraska. Stop showing off. <laughs> Reminds me of my school days. 
Are you gonna vote? No. Why not? Because they're both jokes, so why? But I'm kind of hoping Clooney because I don't want Trump. Why don't you want Trump to win? Because I'm Mexican and he doesn't like Mexicans. Only the bad hombres. Oh. Sorry. I think Hillary's gonna win. Why? Because it's rigged? <laughs> I think Hillary's gonna win. You gotta choose your poison. You have to wait 15 minutes for full potency. So you're gonna vote for Hillary even though you don't like Hillary? She's untrustworthy, but Trump is a mess. If I had to choose, I just, I don't like Clinton. The leaks and everything corrupt. So you're saying there's a chance you could vote for Trump? Slight. So you're telling me there's a chance. Who are you gonna vote for? Hello. Vote on the 27th. Not him. Do you know who I am? No. Larvel Jones. Monsignor. Larvel Jones. I'm Waters. I'm Waters. I'm Waters. And this is my world. Pleasure to meet you, Tom. Thank you. My name's Jesse. Aww. I was at campus at NYU. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a big uh, diversity school. Now, yeah, I went down there mm -hmm. at 8 a.m., yes. which is why people actually got right answers. Because if you're in college and you're going to class at, at 8 a.m. on a Monday, yes. you're probably a little ahead of the curve. Motivated. You're right. motivated. Now, of all the college students, how many, what percentage, knew anything about this? I would say three of the 12 I interviewed had a Pretty, Pretty good, good run, yeah. Uh -huh. And I was surprised people knew what the Electoral College is. The one lady we did very, very good. Yeah, she yeah. and the one guy with the Nebraska and Maine with the proportional representation. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah, the guy with the uh, hoodie, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Citizenship or whatever. Right, he's waiting for the 27th to vote. All right, what is everybody? Fact or tip of the day, the Simpsons and the factor. The tip, moments away. Cooper and Martha Raddatz and their political affiliations. Mr. Cooper was a res registered Democrat, as I said. Whether he is now, we're not quite sure. Ms. Raddatz, um, it's very hard to figure out what she is, but President Obama did attend her wedding. So maybe that's a hint. Fact of tip of the day, the Simpsons and me in a moment. But first, more than 100,000 of you poured into BillOReilly.com over the weekend. Poured in. Many taking advantage of our super offer. Become a premium member on the website. Get any one of my books, including Rising Sun, Lease Wheels' book, The Candidate, and a copy of the Constitution, all free of charge. Rising Sun remains the number one nonfiction book in the world. And we thank you for that. More than a thousand people on Amazon.com have written positive reviews of the book so far. Very gratifying. Now to mail Eileen Barber of Venice, Florida. O'Reilly, please explain to me why the Bush family would rather see Hillary Clinton as president than someone in their own party. Because Trump hammered Jeb Bush, Eileen, you remember that. And because the elder Bush and Bill Clinton became friends. William Conar, Stevensville, Michigan. Bill, you are correct that Trump came across as boorish at the Al Smith dinner, but he needs to use every opportunity to bring out the facts about Hillary Clinton. Marianne Reagan, Quorum, uh, New York. Cardinal Dolan never should have invited Mrs. Clinton to the dinner. She did not apologize for his staff's anti-Catholic remarks and supports the barbaric practice of partial birth abortion. Brad Vogt, Canton, Texas. O'Reilly, you're a doofus <laughs> for criticizing Trump's comments at the Al Smith dinner. As a Catholic and a supposed informed person, you should know that Hillary's position opposed those of Jesus himself. Well, we are not a theocracy here, Brad. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about Jesus or read Killing Jesus, you know he dined with people who were condemned by the Jewish clerics at the time. Jesus's policy was one of engagement. You might want to study up. William Duffy, Borneo, Indonesia. I think William gets the vote for most <laughs> most um, Oblique? I don't know. Cra not crazy, but most far away place. Anyway, William says, I cannot understand why some Americans do not see that Hillary will sell the country out. Fix it, Bill. I wish I could fix everything, William. Mind the sun over there. Don Rizzo, France. I'm an American citizen residing here for many years. I'm voting for Trump because the USA is becoming like France with taxes on everything in order to fund the entitlement state. Do American people really want this? Randy Borg, Covington, Louisiana. Bill, three of us in our 30s went to see you and Miller in Biloxi on Saturday night. The show was fantastic. You guys were funny and charismatic. Glad you had a good time, Randy. Miller and I enjoyed being in Mississippi and in Atlanta the night before. That's it for this year. I'll announce the tour locations for 2017 on Wednesday. John Dalkey, 
Um, Melbourne, Florida, just finished reading Killing the Rising Sun on an airplane going to Bogota, Colombia, masterful work. Will it be translated into Spanish? Yes, and many other languages as well, John. Appreciate you reading the book. Finally, the factor tip of the day, The Simpsons versus The Factor, that cartoon show, has been never been a fan of what we do here. Are you almost through? In a hurry to fail again, Kent? No, it's just I've been off the air for six weeks, and it was torture. Sometimes Your stupider version. Well, we're not older. The Simpsons has been on the air for 29 years, and it's creaking a little, if you use that as an example. We've been here for 20 years, and are as spry as ever. Factor tip of the day. <laughs> and that is it for us tonight. Please check out the Fox News Factor website, get from BillOReilly.com. Also, we like to spout off about the Factor from anywhere in the world. O'Reilly at FoxNews.com, O'Reilly at FoxNews.com. Name and town if you wish to apply and word of the day. Do not be a danius in writing to the Factor. Great word. Again, thanks for watching us tonight. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Please remember that the spin stops here. So we're definitely looking out for you.